Planet Zoo has released 16 different DLCs up to this point, 17 if we take the Deluxe Edition into consideration. Not long ago I asked you guys if you'd like to see my ranking of Planet Zoo DLCs and a lot of you said yes, that's why I decided to record this video. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! This ranking is based solely on my opinions and preferences. Some of those ranks here might be a bit surprising to some of you, but remember that everyone is entitled to their own opinions and if your favorite pack gets a low placement, please don't dislike the video. We all have different things that we personally like and that's why our world is so interesting. I really hope that this ranking will be helpful for people who still don't own all of the packs and are wondering what DLC they should get first. I don't think that any of those packs is bad, every pack brings something new to the game and those additions make it even more complex and enjoyable. While ranking those packs, I had to use some criteria to make it easier for myself. I am a sucker for a generic European city zoo and unique animals and that greatly influenced this ranking. The criteria that I decided to use were how often am I using the building pieces from the certain pack, if it's a building pack of course, how the animals from the pack look, if they were highly requested by me and the community, if they bring something unique to the game, do I like building for them, and finally do I like the plants from a certain pack as for me the plants are equally important as the building pieces. Now that you know my criteria, let's start ranking those packs. On the last place we've got the Deluxe Edition. This probably is not surprising at all, although it includes really cool animals like the Pygmy Hippo or a Komodo Dragon, there are only 3 animals which compared to other packs on this list is just a very low number. By the way I also took some additional time to rank all the animals in those packs so the numbers you'll see right now under the animal photos are my personal ranks. There were no deluxe plants or deluxe building pieces in this pack, that's why the deluxe edition had to be ranked the lowest. Next up, the Arctic pack. It was the first proper DLC for Planet Zoo that has been released not long after the game premiered. It included only 4 animals, there was no exhibit animal in this pack. From the animals that were added, I feel like only two, the polar bear and the reindeer were requested by the community. The quality of those animals is also not the best compared to the newer models, however for me the doll sheep takes the first place when it comes to this pack as I always love to build enclosures for those guys. I must say that I never used the building pieces from this pack and there were no plants added and that's the only building pack with no plants, that's why I decided to rank it down. That low. The next place belongs to the South America pack. Although the animal species added with this pack were rather requested by the community, the quality of the models is rather bad compared to the newer species. I personally don't really like the building pieces from this pack and I barely use them. The texture on bamboo walls is just not it for me and there are a lot of very themed pieces that are not versatile enough to use in different kinds of builds other than highly themed temple or jungle designs. The quality of the plants is also much worse than some of the plants from the newer DLCs and I just don't use the plants from this DLC in my builds. I originally placed the Southeast Asia animal pack below the South America pack, but the recent remodeling of the Malayan tapir made me move it a rank higher. It was our first animal pack and I think a lot of people were very surprised by the choices that Frontier made here. We were very early into the game and there were so many highly requested animals back then, but Frontier decided to go for some less popular choices. I still love my Binturong, Sunbird and the Clouded Leopard, but the rest are the animals that in my opinion we could live without, especially the Proboscis Monkey which is super uncommon in captivity because of its very specific diet. The animal pack to me means no new building pieces, which of course is another drawback. Now, this probably will be a huge surprise to some of you. I decided to place the aquatic pack on the 13th place. Listen, I know that it introduced the deep diving which was so revolutionary back then, but now that Frontier added deep diving to many base game animals it doesn't feel so groundbreaking anymore. My main problem with this pack are the building pieces that I don't really like that much and I don't use in my builds a lot. 
I quite like the plants that were introduced here, especially the ponytail palm tree. When it comes to the animals, the king penguin is my favorite from this pack and I really enjoyed our first semi-aquatic exhibit for the diamondback terrapin. However, I am not a huge fan of the models of the grey seal and the giant otter as they seem rather goofy and cartoonish to me. And the dwarf caiman was an interesting choice but it wasn't really requested by the community. I am very sorry to all of my American friends but the 12th place belongs to the North America animal pack. At this point the ranking gets very difficult to me as I really enjoy all of the remaining packs. I decided to place the North America animal pack here because although it has a really nice variety of animals, those are not the species that I gravitate the most to. If I were to start a new zoo, those would probably not be the animals that I would think of adding straight away, maybe besides the California sea lion. I also think that since the release of this pack, the quality of animal models has greatly improved. Besides the sea lion, the highlights of this pack were definitely the North American beaver and its cool dam enrichment item and the moose which I really wanted to have in the game. I also sometimes wish that it was actually a building pack with a cool wood cabin or western theme that could introduce a lot of useful wooden pieces to the game. Next up, here we have the Australia pack on the 11th place. This is one of the older packs but I still really like it. It introduced some of the much needed Australian species to the game. Before that we only had the saltwater crocodile from Australia which is crazy to think about now. Do I think that the animal models in this pack are some of the best? Absolutely not, some of them could definitely be improved. I am still a bit gutted that the koala spends most of its time on the ground instead the trees and that the dingo's color variations are quite limited compared to their real life counterparts. However, the pack introduced some really useful building pieces that I use frequently up to this time. Especially the metal pieces such as beams and the corrugated sheets and roofs. It also added the birth animation for the marsupials which is worth noting and some cool plants such as the beautiful eucalyptus trees and the triodia grasses that I really love. And I am still a huge fan of the southern cassowary. Let's start counting down the top 10 packs. On the 10th place, I decided to place quite a recent DLC, the Arid Animal Pack. I don't think that this pack brought anything groundbreaking into the game, that's why it is not ranked higher. The new spitting behavior introduced with the dromedary camel was cool, but how long can you watch your camel spit on your guests? I also don't think that most of those animals were highly requested by the community. However, we cannot deny that those are some of the best models that Frontier has ever produced. The quality of the animals is just insane compared to some of the base game animals or even some from the previous DLCs. I especially love the African Crested Porcupine which was in my like top 3 requested animals for this game and all the quills on this animal look just incredible. I really appreciate all the color variations that Frontier added for the Dromadary Camel and I am a huge fan of the beautiful Somali Wild Ass. The 9th place belongs to the Africa Pack. The building pieces introduced with this pack with the whole variety of different shapes and sizes of the plaster pieces, the wooden beams and the tiles are to this day some of the most useful pieces in the game that I use all of the time. It actually used to be my favorite building pack back in the days. I am not super crazy about the plants introduced here but I absolutely love the animals. The meerkats introduced with the new digging behavior and the burrows were definitely a highlight of this pack along with the beautiful and highly requested southern wind rhino. It also introduced the adorable fennec fox and I just cannot imagine my zoo without the flock of the African penguins. Number 8 the Twilight Pack. Yes, I am fully aware that adding this pack so high might be quite surprising as it probably wasn't the best received pack by the community. But I have my reasons. First and most important thing about this pack, the stalagmite pieces. I just love them because of all the possibilities. Some of my best builds were possible thanks to those rock walls that I created using the stalagmite pieces. 
Secondly, a lot of people thought that the Twilight pack was too Halloween themed, but some of those pieces are actually some of the best pieces in the game right now, especially the mason and the wood pieces. I'm also a huge fan of the common fox glove and the lords and ladies plants. When it comes to the animals, the Twilight Pack introduced our first walkthrough exhibit animal, the Egyptian Fruit Bat. It was the first flying animal which was really exciting back then and added something really unique to the game. I also really love my adorable raccoons. The newest DLC, the Eurasia Animal Pack, takes the 7th spot. As a European, I really loved the Eurasia Animal Pack with my whole heart, but the packs that I ranked higher were just a little bit more exciting for me. This pack definitely includes some of the best models out of the entire roster. Most of those animals were also really requested by the community and I know that a lot of you were very happy to finally have them. The Mute Swan brought something unique to the game, being our first proper waterfowl. The Sloth Bear is one of, if not the best designed animal in the game with incredible animations and the Takin is not only beautiful but was one of my most requested animals to be added to the game. So happy that Europe got such a wonderful pack! My sixth spot belongs to the Oceania pack. As I already mentioned many times, to me this is the cutest DLC ever. All of the animals included in this DLC are very small, very adorable and very well made. They all have their unique animations and overall are some of the best animals in the game. I especially love the Tasmanian Devil that was the most requested animal by the community back then and the Kiwi with its wonderful animations. Quokka was a very welcome surprise that I think a lot of us didn't see coming. I am also so happy that the Oceanian roster got some love and I really I really hope that those are not the last animals from this region to be added into the game. The building pieces are okay. I really like the new netting pieces, thatch roofs, ropes and rock walls, but there are also a lot of highly themed pieces which don't make this pack too versatile. What really brings this DLC to whole another level to me are the plants. The silver ferns, cabbage trees, king ferns and nikau palms are some of the best and most beautiful plants in the game and I cannot imagine building an enclosure for a tropical animals without them now. And now let's start with my top 5 packs. Things are getting exciting. In the 5th spot I place the grasslands animal pack. This pack included some of the most requested animals both by me and the entire community and they quickly became favorites to a lot of us. The grasslands theme was so diverse that we got animals from almost all the continents which was so awesome. All the models here are extraordinary and very highly detailed. And it is a pack with the most number of species. If we count all the species of butterflies, there are 12 new animals in total. The butterflies are my absolute favorite walkthrough exhibit animals. The fact that you can mix so many different species in one exhibit and that the guests can interact with them makes it so fun to build for them. But the butterflies are not the only thing that I love about this pack. In just one DLC we got the maned wolf from South America with some of the best animations in the game, the highly requested emu and the red necked wallaby from Australia, a little nine banded armadillo from North, Central and South America, the caracal blue wildebeest and striped hyena from Africa. Comparing the new wildebeest and hyena to their base game cousins the black wildebeest and spotted hyena really shows how Frontier was able to improve their animal designs over the years. And that brings us to the fourth place, where I decided to place the Tropical Pack. This pack is a perfect combination of highly requested and really well made animals and very useful building pieces. The variety of animals is really good, we got something for everyone, a new primate was finally added, a reptile, a carnivore, a beautiful hoofstock animal and a new walkthrough exhibit animal. It included some of the most requested animals back at the time being the red river hog, the lark gibbon and the sloth. All the animals are just exceptionally made, I especially love the masterpiece that the model of the red river hog is. The asian water monitor was also a 
very welcome addition. A lot of people compare the building pieces of this pack with a slightly newer Oceania pack, but to me personally, the pieces from this pack are much better and more useful. I use the timber and the temple stone pieces in all of my current builds and I really like the new brick wall set. My only downside of this pack are the plants, as I have quite mixed opinions about them here. Although the Rafflesias and Peacher plants look really cool, they are not the most common plants in Zeus. On the other hand, I just love the basket ferns and I use them in a lot of my builds. To be completely honest, it is a bit difficult to me not to be a little biased towards this pack as Frontier invited me to their office in Cambridge for the official premiere of it and it was definitely one of the highlights of my entire YouTube career. It's time to reveal my top 3 packs. Even though I already know what's there, I am weirdly super thrilled for this. Okay, so the third spot and the bronze medal goes to the Euro Pack. The Euro Pack is just exceptional when it comes to the building pieces. As I told you in the intro, I am a sucker for a generic European city zoo, and this pack is just perfect for that. It includes many useful metal pieces like iron bars and marquee beams as well as the hinges, LED caps and cables, those smaller pieces are especially useful for creating some detailed builds. I honestly cannot imagine building a custom fence without this pack. On top of that, the new stone wall set is really beautiful and useful, there are cool LED signs and we also got new types of entrances to our zoo, the bus and the boat and also a food truck that you can add all of the shop counters to. I also really love the two types of trees that were added in this pack, the olive tree and the cork oak. When it comes to the animals, we finally got some decent European representation. Back in the days, European wildlife was really lacking in the game. I especially love the European badger, the Eurasian lynx and the fallow deer. There were also three new enrichment items added in this pack, such as the scarecrow feeder and the goat mountain, which is not so common nowadays, unfortunately. The Alpine Ibex is also amazing due to their incredible traversable area, but I feel like the model could use some little more work. The second spot and the silver medal goes to… the Wetlands Animal Pack. It is definitely my favorite animal pack up to this point and I still remember how excited I was when it was firstly announced and it was actually the first pack that I got the early access for. This was the first biome based pack and I think that Frontier chose to go in a very good direction by deciding to switch things up and introduce those biome packs because that meant going for animals from different continents and I know that the community appreciated that greatly. The roster of animals in this pack is a perfect combination of highly requested animals and very interesting species that we got to learn more about. All the animals here are amazing. I of course love the addition of the capybara that I really wanted to see in the game. The fact that it got the new hot water tap enrichment made it even better. I love building habitats for the Asian small cloth otters and watch their cute animations. I also love the fact that the red crowned crane was included because we really needed a new bird addition and it was just so awesome. Even though the platypus is not really a common zoo animal, it was still super amazing to have this really interesting and bizarre looking animal included here. The Nile Letchway is still probably the most beautiful antelope in the game. The same goes to the spectacled caiman that might be the most beautiful and detailed reptile. It was also so cool to finally get a bigger bovid, such as the wild water buffalo, especially that the roster of the Asian hoofstock is still very small. I love this pack so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't guessed it by now, the champion, the first place, the golden medal goes to the conservation pack. There are so many things that I absolutely love about this pack that I don't even know where to start. 
First of all, this pack came as a huge surprise to us. I feel like we got so used to the regional packs that the theme of the conservation pack was very unexpected, but I actually adored this theme. One of the main focuses of zoos around the world is animal conservation and this pack was all about this and I am so grateful to Planet Zoo for highlighting the issues of the endangered animals. Secondly, there are the building pieces. In my opinion, this is hands down the best set of building pieces in the entire game. This was just a dream for the generic realistic zoo builder, but on the other hand, I feel like those pieces fit to all the highly themed zoos as well. I am talking here about all the backstage pieces of course. All the tools, rigs, shovels, hoses, crates, carton boxes, taps, wheelbarrows, vegetables, fruits are essential now if you want to build a backstage areas or shelters for your habitats. Please Frontier, if you are watching, give us even more of this stuff. I also love all the vents and gutter pieces and I use them all the time. The 3D printed walls and all the wooden pieces from this pack are all so incredible. I also love the plants that were added here, especially all the metal flowers and the Yorkshire fog grass. Now, the animals, what an incredible roster! Each of those animals comes with a very sad but also very important conservation message. The model of Przewalski's wild horse is still one of my favorites in the game and I was so happy that it was added. I have a very personal story with the scimitar horned oryx that involves my late grandfather, so the addition of these animals was the best gift to me. I also love the Siamang, it was the first animal that could brachiate in the game and it made creating the climbing frames for it super exciting. The Amur Leopard is one of my favorite cats in the game, although it looks a bit goofy and cartoony, this is just how it is with Frontier's cat models. Finally, I also really love the exhibit animal here, the Axolotl, as it comes in several color variations and it is so amazing to see those cute guys float in the water section of their exhibit. So yeah, it appears that the conservation pack is my favorite Planet Zoo pack out of them all. Ranking those packs was one of the most difficult things that I had to do for a YouTube video. I just couldn't decide which ones I liked the most. In fact, I changed my order several times while recording this video. In the end, I am pretty happy with the order and I stand by my choices. I hope you guys enjoyed my personal ranking. Let me know down in the comments what are your opinions about it and maybe you have your own personal rankings that you would like to share. I would be very curious to see how you would rank those DLCs. If you'd like to see more of those rankings from me, definitely let me know down in the comments. I can certainly record more, for example, ranking all the animals in Planet Zoo, which will be a great challenge. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Give this video a big thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it and of course leave me a nice comment tell me what you think about the new type of the video on my channel if you guys would like to support the channel a little bit extra you can do it with the join button down below thank you guys so much for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys